Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, I, before I get started, I just want to uh, wish everybody uh, health and I hope everybody is staying safe uh, at home and uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I honestly wish the best for everybody. Um, I just thought that I would use this uh, kind of extra time even though I've got the kids at home and uh, it's pretty hectic to answer a few questions. Uh, during the past bit I was busy at work. Uh, I got a few questions and one was really like interesting to me. Uh, Michelle was asking how do you practice carving arch tops? So we, we all know that uh, an arch top is a pretty thick piece of material and uh, like if you compare it to a thin kind of flat top guitar ukulele or the likes uh, it gets pretty pricey if you just buy that piece to practice. So I kind of um, answered quickly saying like you can use a 2x4 and uh, I did in the past like maybe you, some of you remember the ukulele which, which is a flat top that was made out of just like a, a piece of spruce quarter sawn and I, I got all the material for the sides, top, back, uh, the neck itself as well. You can't even see like there's a little knot here that I put uh, on the peg head. Uh, just to like it, it and it's it's decent uh, It's decent sounding uh, it's not the greatest but at the same time we're just uh, talking right now about practicing so in, in these times right now if you're watching that in real time um, that I just posted it's pretty hard just to go to the lumber store and go through the pile and like I said like for me it was a spruce 2x4 that I was able to get uh, that was quarter sawn. So just just for the sake, if you want to do something in your shop right now and, and you have a leftover 2x4, it ju just use that one, although it would be preferable to have a, a quarter sawn. But um, so uh, what you want to do is like, and this one is uh, was going to be a sequel to the 2x4 ukulele. I kind of started 2x4 mandolin, which I've never finished, but the sides were made from the 2x4. The front here was made from the 2x4 and I had the back as well ready to go to do the back. I, I just never finished it because I just never finished it. So, uh, uh, but it, it gives you good practice because it's the same kind of wood, like the, it's a soft wood. So either like if, if you have like a 2x4, it's going to be a soft wood. So it's going to be fir, it's going to be pine, it's going to be spruce, it's going to be like something along those lines. And that's going to give you a good idea for carving a sound board. Um, would I recommend using uh, softwood on the sides? No. First, because they're extremely hard to bend and second, they would not be ideal for making a real instrument. So if you do have leftovers of maple or harder woods that are used for back and sides, that, that would be ideal. But just for carving purposes, uh, so the 2x4, as you can see right now, what you want to do is cut it uh, either with a bandsaw and a, a four inch high, you can have pretty much any type of bandsaw that will be able to resaw that in the middle. Uh, if you don't have a bandsaw, it's it's not that hard to get like a, a just a handsaw and cut it right split in the middle. And then you'll have to do a shorter piece to do the add-on wing. So I don't know if you can see here, uh, but I've got a little notch, and that piece here is an added piece, and you can't really see it but it's there. Now, would that be structurally sound? Yes. If you look at the uh, uh, stand-up bass or if you look at uh, cellos uh, in, the, in the violin family, oftentimes it's four pieces making the front that are glued together. So there, there's no issue structurally to do mandolin with four pieces. Uh, in uh, the case of practicing, that would also add the, the uh, aspect of, of helping you practice your joints. Uh, one thing you have to remember when you do a uh, soundboard, a lot of people often ask like do you do spring joints or do you just like go like everything tight. For me is that I look if I can see any light between my two pieces. If there's any light that means that my joint is not right. A spring joint would mean that the two ends of the board are touching and then in the middle, there's a tiny gap that you clamp after the fact. So if you do that, uh, the pressure, 
it's going to be put on your soundboard right here in the middle where you already have the tension of the springboard uh, that that's pulling apart so I, I I don't believe it would be a good joint like most of the joints that I've seen done in Luthery are like a joint that you can't see light through so that's what you want to go for here for the center joint and using your 2x4 you're going to have to do extra ones here um, after that you obviously need a blueprint uh, that blueprint is going to allow you to uh, have the so, so basically you cut it to, to shape so this is basically uh, a full size uh, soundboard and once you have this, you, you're going to put all your layout and then you're going to carve it on the inside and on the outside. And uh, that's basically going to allow you to practice your carving. On a 2x4, you can get two of those easy. That, that's from the same 2x4, those two, plus the sides, uh, plus the curve. You can also do your curve as well uh, to, to do the lining on the inside. Uh, the only thing I would uh, actually tell you if you do want to go forward and kind of finish the instrument do use a, a maple tail block and neck block for for your instrument here and then you can also use the 2x4 here for the tone bars on the inside now this is just going to allow you to practice for a mandolin sized instrument because when when you you thickness it and when you split it in two and you thickness it uh, you don't have enough thickness to do a, a bigger instrument. Like let's say if you if you look at a my octave mandolin here, you kind of need to have a full one inch thick piece of material. So what you would need to do in that case to practice carving that, uh, you would need to basically do two layers. So you would have to have the first layer and then make sure it's nice and flat depending on your tool set it might get really tricky but then you could stack another set on top and then practice carving that uh, so a 2x4 around here runs for about like three or four dollars depending on on uh, the length you're getting um, i think it's very very suitable for practicing because it, it's really inexpensive and if you if you uh, screw it up, you just toss it and you can get another 2x4 and practice again. So um, in regards to uh, this question on how to uh, practice your carving on a soundboard or an arch top instrument, uh, the 2x4 approach would be my answer to it. So I hope this was helpful for you guys to uh, give you options on how to practice carving your soundboard. What about what you found in the past like is there anything that you tried in the past that was very inexpensive and that allowed you to get your craft to a different level and and, and make you able to make a sound uh, an arch top instrument for a soundboard or a backboard so once again thank you all for stopping by uh, don't forget to like and share the video and until next time i wish you well